the stream yes. is going to be live in four seconds. Oh my god! Just press it at one k. Oh. Well, let me add the role to you of the Dojo Sensei, which gives you push a talk and then priority speaker. So, if you if people are being too loud, just use your push to talk thing, and then uh, that should give you priority speaker. So, hello there. So, how are you doing today? Not too bad. Not too bad. What about yourself? I'm doing doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. Had a still have a vaguely productive day. I worked on some stuff. So. <laughs> Um, have you, did you have scrims earlier? Yeah, I had some pickup scrims. They, they go all right. Oh, hey, the nature as well. We've got, um, oh, everybody's coming up in chat. All right. Well, um, I think we're now we're, we're live, so we might as well might as well get right down to it. We've got quite a lot of people in chat, got people watching, and people will just show up as, as they go along. Um, I have got some uh example footage which i can stream like I, you know what i do i can stream start streaming some matches um which i've got recorded now and then it'll be just the, the stuff from the qualifiers that i've recorded and then when when we're talking we can go and show specific examples of those things so if i share I open up like um this match and share this that there we go and then just got we're gonna this is gonna just be in the background whilst we're talking oh i need to make sure i'm muted because mm -hmm. it's got my um me talking in the background sometimes we don't want that <laughs> so it's moving at the same time mm -hmm. um yeah so uh shall we get started all right clutch how do you want to do this do you want me to go through my like little uh curriculum type thing or do you want to just take take the wheel straight away you can go through your curriculum thing and then just point out any particular plays you want me to talk through and describe all right great well so what i've done so far and feel free to like you know uh, interrupt me i'm just i'll just talk a bit and interrupt me and tell me if i'm making any mistakes or something that i've missed over in that um so so what we're going to do is we're going to go over this little spiel at the beginning which i've like written out some things that I want to cover, and then we're going to look at some footage of um, players, uh, some plays from Nemesis and some plays from um, El Collectors from last week's qualifier and the third qualifier for that. So, and then we will talk about those individual ones as well. So yeah, right. I'll start off with the, uh, or just get started then. Okay, so when, Today's session is about when to push the opponent's point. We are talking about when you're in a Dominion match and your enemies have capped a point. When do you risk pushing into the enemy point? Um, oh, sorry, was that not full screen? I'm not sure that is. Sorry, stayed just somewhere. Is that better? All right. Um, make sure I've got my little. Is that better, Stag? Just say yes or no or whatever. Um, all right, so well, yeah, we're yeah, we're talking about when when you're going to push an enemy's home point. So uh, this is a point that the enemy owns, and you currently don't, and you want to capture it. So pushing an enemy point is risky. It is it is one of these things that people do a lot in matchmaking. You see them running into enemy points all the time, and we know we all know that like matchmaking, you know, you just sort of filing one by one onto an enemy point where there's enemies there and getting killed over and over again is a bad idea. But that's particularly a bad idea because if you die on an opponent's own point, they get defender renown based on who kills you. So for every person that the enemy kills, um, so that they, every uh, player that the opponents kill on this, sorry, this is just, stop, stop, sorry about that. Um, sorry, any player that the opponents kill on their home point, they will get Defender Renown, which is depends on the class, and it gives it's given to every single player on that point on their team. So let's say you run in and there's three guys there and you get killed by one of them. Let's say he's a, he's a Warden, he's a Vanguard. That's going to give every single person on the opponent's team 25 Renown, which is obviously a massive Renown buff to that team. It's enough to get people their feats really early on. And as well as it being a very risky thing to do to push an enemy point, it's also fairly low reward because even if you do cap the point, 
the healing rate from points is quite slow, so it can take quite a long time for you to heal up. And if you cap the points and then immediately get rotated on, you're only going to gain the number of hard points you, you know, as soon as an enemy sh shows up again to contest this um, this point, you're going to stop g generating any hard points. So if you cap a point and you've got it for, let's say, five seconds, and then before an enemy shows up to contest it again, you're really not gaining many points at that point. Like if you then eventually die on the zone and they take it back again, overall you'll have gained you know, maybe 10 hard points from this, and you'll have had a little bit of renown from contesting, because when you're contesting a point, you get a small amount of renown as well, not as much as boosting, which is slightly lower than that. So it is a fairly low reward thing to do, unless you can capture and hold the point for quite a long time. Um, would you agree with that, Clutch, in terms of like that assessment? Yeah, pretty much. Sounds right to me. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll, I'll, so that, with that in mind, that this is it is a fairly risky thing to be doing sorry i just keep on minimizing i'm to switch out because i've got it on full screen and then it it pauses itself um you really got to think about why you want to capture a zone why are you going to push in this in this zone well first point um it's a fairly obvious one is you're going to try to, ca to capture the point um you want to take the zone from the enemies which gives you 100 soft points and allows you to start gaining points from capturing it so obviously dominion is a uh, an objective game. You need to cap you need to have points to win. It's a it's a fairly straightforward uh, point, but it is it but it is important. Like that is, you know, you are going to be capturing, gaining points from holding zones as long as they're not contested or if you're boosting it. It also gives you a place to heal, and this is absolutely vital if you are in a situation where you don't have a, a captured point. So quite often you see in games nowadays. If you end up in a situation where one team is controlling both of the capture points, and that forces the opponents, <coughs> fuck me, to go and contest one of these points because you just need a place to heal. There's no two ways about it. If you don't have somewhere your team can heal, you're going to get whittled down in the mid lane. Even if you win all your fights, you're still going. You're going to be at a disadvantage, and eventually you will die. Um, so that is another reason you need to. You want, might want to have a point to capture and hold the zone is have somewhere to heal. The other reason why you might want to capture a, capture a zone is to rescue your team from breaking. Um, if the opponents are, if you're breaking and they have the opponents have more than a thousand points, but only a hundred points of that is from holding a zone, you can capture that zone and you can rescue your team from breaking, which is obviously you know vital if you don't want to lose the match. You can also capture a zone to push an opponent's team into breaking by getting more than a thousand points with that. Um, so those are the obvious reasons why you want to like capture a zone, but you might not just push a, push a zone, an enemy zone home point, just to capture it. You might want to push the point for other reasons as well. So these are, are like maybe less obvious reasons, but I think they're equally as important. And sometimes you cap, you push a zone and you want to hold it you know, put a fight on that zone for as long as possible, and then maybe leave without capturing it. Or if you do capture it, and enemies come in to reinforce the fight, to concede that point and walk off it. So, probably the most obvious of these, uh, like the primary non-capturing reason, is to prevent your opponent's healing. So let's say you're in a sanctuary bridge like this map we're watching at the moment, and the enemy, ha you've just won the team fight, and a few enemies are leaving to heal, and they're at low health. Like I say, like Setmix right now is trying to go and find somewhere to heal, and he doesn't have a point to heal at the moment. And you want to go and ca push their enemy point to contest that heal and stop them from healing up and getting back into the fight. Your aim isn't necessarily to kill the and capture the point, it's to stop them from healing up and coming back into the fight. Um, Anything to add on to that one, Clutch? No, that sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. Preventing preventing heal healing is one of the objectives you want to um, might, reason why you want might want to push a point. Next thing is stalling point generation. So obviously, if you are in a situation where 
uh, your opponent's got a point and they're not on your point, then they are not, you're on an enemy point, you're contesting it, they are no longer generating hard points from owning that point. So sometimes you want to push onto an enemy point to keep them fighting there and not gaining other points. Um, so your team, let's say your, your home point isn't contested, you'll be generating points from that. And if, if you've got mid as well, that's another reason why you'd want to be fighting on their point so as to be slowly generating points. Um, obviously, that's important to gain a point lead. Them. And the final reason, which I think you might want to push uh, an enemy point, is to relieve pressure on another part of the map. Let's say you're fighting on your home point, some of your teammates are fighting on your home point, and they are ganking, but they're going to be on low health after finishing the gank and need chance to heal. And if an en enemy shows up, they're going to be in a very unfavorable fight. Or maybe you, as a like a third member of your team, you want to push the enemy's home point to allow your your teammates to to get a sort of pressure free heal on their on your home point. So rather than you're going there to capture the point, you're going there to prevent to to make it so that your en the enemies have to respond. Because obviously, if you go to an enemy's point and they don't come and take the point you get the, get the point for free. you get the zone for free and then that's a big advantage so sometimes you want to push their home point just to relieve pressure elsewhere um are there other reasons clutch that you might think that you want to push that i haven't covered not what i can think of okay well sounds like i'm doing <laughs> sounds like i'm doing a good job if clutch is approving <laughs> of my reasoning <laughs> um okay so Next thing, we talked a little about why why you'd want to push. The next thing I want to talk about is about the differences in types of maps and how that can affect where when you are pushing a zone. So just this one, I'll just move on to the next match. Okay. So there are roughly uh, maps in front are based into roughly two categories we've got linear maps with very definite home points and the example we're seeing at the moment which is um Cisdale gate this is one of them and we also have maps which are wide maps which don't have definite home points like temple garden or overwatch maps with linear home with like home points are yeah like i said uh sank bridge citadel gate harbor to some extent um beachhead's also got home points uh, am I missing one? Um, feel free to chip in if I'm forgetting something. And then on the in the obviously we're we're talking only about the competitively relevant maps. These things do apply to other maps, which in matchmaking as well the same principles apply. But obviously matchmaking is just a slightly different kettle of fish. So you have maps like Gauntlet and Forge that have definite home points as well, but are played competitively. And then the other kind of maps, these wide maps where you have neither point is closer to either side are things like Temple Garden, High Fort, Overwatch. In the non-competitive maps, we have Sentinel. Um, I don't think there's other competitive maps that are, what would you consider wide like that? Um, do you have another name for them, by the way? Or just, is this uh, wide and linear, the terminology fairly, under fairly understandable and regularly used? Uh, it's, it's good enough. We don't really have a specific word for the different map types. We just say whatever. Yeah, like I mean, it's linear or yeah, I mean, uh, these are like I mean, these are fairly rough generalizations. And then there's maps. Is it's always a sort of spectrum between them. You have extremely linear maps like Sentinel. Sorry, like um, Sank Bridge, where the home points are very much at the extreme ends, and one team has a massive advantage getting to their home point. And then you have maps which are still have home points like Beachhead, but where the rotations from the enemy spawn point to your home point aren't that long. So you can still get there fairly quickly. Um, and then there's, you know, the linear maps, sorry, the wide maps like um, Overwatch and High Fort. There's a difference between those which have fast rotations from your spawn points to the capture points versus the ones which are a bigger maps, which have longer rotations. So High Fort, for example, has probably got the longest rotations 
between your spawn point and the capture points. It takes quite a long time for enemy uh, res for respawns to get there. And that makes quite a big difference on whether you, when you are choosing to push a point. On those maps where you have um, even points between the defenders and the attackers, that also you have to consider which of those capture zones is the most important one. Because they're not made equal and you end up with some points which are closer to mid lane or have faster rotations to the rest of the map than the other points. So, for example, on Temple Garden and on High Fort, the C point is a lot more important. Or it's considered a lot more important than the A point because the time it takes you to get from C point to mid is a lot faster than it, than from A point to mid. So, one of those points has a priority um, of which ones you want to you want to push. Um, so, when uh we'll, we'll we'll get into a little bit in terms of assessing the risk for how and how successful you think a push is going to be but the type of map and where those points are does have a big impact on on them in particularly in terms of how fast the enemy are going to be able to get to the point off respawn um would you say there are other differences that i haven't covered there much or is that all right sounds fine to me Okay. <laughs> Sorry if I'm just uh, talking and that you came, you all came here to, to hear Clutch talk and I'm just blabbering, but um, we'll get on to the bits where Clutch is talking about his plays in a short moment, I think. Um, especially when we get to this next bit where I'm going to talk about the, uh, the risks and successes of how likely you are to succeed when you go to push. So we talked a bit earlier about why you'd want to push an enemy point. So once you've decided, once you've got a reason to push at any point, you then have to think about how successful it is, how successful are you likely to be in doing that push? So how risky is the push to do? Um, and there are a lot of factors to this. So most importantly, probably, is where are the enemies? Can, are they on the point already? Can they get to the point in time to stop you capturing? <laughs> Sorry, Stag saying that I'm going a bit fast. All right, well, um, you know, if you guys have any questions or any point, uh, just go ahead. Like, if I'm not, uh, I'm just talking to myself a little bit. I tend to go go fast. And if I'm if I'm saying something that's too fast for you to properly um, follow along, just say, and I will try and slow down and make that a bit clearer. So sorry about that. I do have a tendency to just allow it to myself. So. So yeah, we're going to talk about the the risks and successes of pushing a point. So I think the most important thing is where are the enemies? Can they get there in time to stop you capturing the point? Or can they get there in time to stop you doing the 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 reason you want to get to the point? So if you're going there to if you're going there to contest a heal, do they have enough time for an ally to show up and prevent you contesting that heal or force you off the point to heal. To another extent, like, do they have, you know, are they there with feats to be able to stop heal? You know, if you go there to put, to contest the heal, are they just able to use a feat, a, heal, a feat to heal up and and not require the heal? So you're like looking about, um, you're trying to assess how valuable the your push is as well as how risky it is. Um, the next thing is if you're going to capture a point rather than do the other the other reasons we've talked about, will you be able to capture the point in time? Will you be able to capture the point with without the enemy showing up? Is it a free point that you can just pick up? Or if you go there, will are the enemy close enough to the point that they can contest you can come and contest the capture? When you go there, do the enemy have a lot of health? So the, are you at health disadvantage going on to capture the point? And will you be able to not win that 1v1 if it's 1v1? Do you have renown advantage? Do you have feat advantage? If you go to contest a heal, but the opponent has, I think I mentioned before, the opponent has a bunch of feats and they have their juggernaut able to stall to make even more use of their health advantage. Do they do they have you know projectile feats? They can quickly kill you. These are all factors in 
thinking how able you are to capture a point. Um, like another one I think is if the enemy on, are on the point already, will you have to fight to get onto the point, not just contest it? We've all been in a situation where the enemy are at the edge of the point, and they and you have to you know push them onto the point in order to get there. And all the time if they take any damage, they're able to heal up because you're not actually on the point yet. That's a really important factor in pushing a point, and I think it's one that you definitely want to avoid because if you can't get onto the point and you're you're fighting in a one v one where they're healing the whole time, that's really bad for you. Um, you also have to consider the character which is blocking the point if that's if that's the case and like do you what's the matchup of you on the point if you're black playing black prior and you've got a really good bash you can bash your way into the point no problem and you're going to have a lot uh, an easy time getting onto the point it won't be such a disadvantage if they're body blocking if you're playing peacekeeper or berserker you haven't got something you can use to push them into the point it's going to be a lot it's going to be a lot harder to get onto that point so yeah um sgc jones mentions in particular, it's difficult for close choke points like a uh, temple A point has got a very small door, or sanctuary, sank bridge C point, but again has a very small route to get onto it. Um, you also have to consider how how in terms of ri how risky the point is to get onto. Does that point have loads of ledges? Um, does the entrance have loads of ledges? If you push onto a point and there's a warlord guarding it, and you're trying to bash them onto the point. Can they dodge, get a guard break, and then get a free ledge kill on you? That's something you definitely want to avoid happening. Because even if you go to contest a low health warlord, they can easy, they can quickly kill you. It can be a very risky fight, even if it's if it's on the low health. If it's a bad, if it's a point where they have an advantage that way. And I guess the last thing is how many players are you going to devote to that push? Do you have just one person? Are you going to contest a back? You're going to try and force a back cap? To pull attention away, you only want to send one person there. Are you in a situation where you have both points are capped by the enemy and you need to have a point to heal? Well, then you want to send all four of them there, or you want to send three of them there with one person to prevent their maybe go and stall the two opponents on their other point to to come and push. Um, so deciding how many players you want to dedicate to that cause is quite a big decision and then you need to decide that not just how many you want but how what is the renown on the players that you're sending what is the health on the players that you're sending that's all quite a big calculation to come in um and i guess the last one is the health of the enemy players will how much health do the enemy players have are they low health and that means you're going to be able to cap that point easily are they high health that's going to be a difficult thing to you're going to have to pull off a successful 100 o gank or do they have low health and or or worse are they going to come in off respawn so you go in there and you've got one person on high health and then two of them are dead but they're going to get a respawn and be able to come back and push you and then you'll be fighting a 3v2 on an enemy home point so those are all um i mean i've, I've thrown a lot of factors at you um and i guess now what we're going to do is talk a little bit about some of these some examples and then we'll take a lot slower and Clutch will, um, you know, talk specifically about the calculus of each individual decision, if that makes any sense. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. Okay, so I'm going to pause this video here, and I will instead bring up some Nemesis games. Okay, so I'm going to switch the screen, which I'm sharing, change windows. Okay, let me just, I think I'll have to close my other browsers and Windows so it's only got one of these to go. Okay, um, again, be patient with me whilst I try and figure out why I can't open the button I just had open. Has all my index. Sorry about this. Don't remember the new my browser entirely. 
I don't know, I don't, the Discord wasn't letting me um, pick the window properly. Yeah. Okay, so currently this is my little Word document. Um, can you all see that? Is it showing up on the screen properly? Yep, I can see it. Okay, all right, let's go to this in that case. Okay, so this is from the winners for EU qualifier number one. All right, wait, I clicked on the wrong link. <laughs> um, I want to click the nemesis one. Okay. Well, these are some links that Freeze gave me, and he said they were all nemesis ones, but apparently only two of them are. All right, here we go. So we have um, E qualifier number two. So that's a couple of weeks ago. We have Nam Gloria versus Nemesis match two. And I think this is a push that Freezer selected as something that he wanted to ask about. So let's go. All right. Tell us a little bit about this um, match if you if you remember it. We can put it back to the beginning if you if you want. Um, but here, Clutch is on with Goki and he's pushing on to the enemy home point. We've got a bit of a hard point disadvantage. Tell me a little bit about, about this push. I would if uh, I could actually see it. Oh shit! Is it not showing up? Uh, um, All I can see is the document right now. Oh, damn. Um, sorry about that. Everything has been. Okay, there we go. That's it. Sorry. Okay, apparently it's got a different window on this <coughs> for each of the things, so I might have to switch over multiple times. Sorry about that. Okay, let's go from here. So yeah, take it away. So basically, just at this point in time, I'm just worrying about team fighting in general. I'm trying to keep uh, an eye on the total uh, enemy health pool. Obviously, the team fight doesn't end up going very well for us. Here, here Tetsuo probably should have been worrying about our home point getting pushed uh, more than anything, trying to disengage from the team fight. It's something that we've been trying to practice in scrims. Like when you realize a team fight isn't going very well for your team, you try to pick off to go and defend your home point to try and make it a lot more difficult for the enemy team to take. However, what our teammate does here is he goes and pushes the home point when multiple of the enemy team are already low, so they have nowhere to heal. Which means that, first of all, they're not able to go and push our home point because their own home point is being threatened and they're all on low health. So even though pushing the home point is a dangerous situation here, there was multiple people who weren't able to heal any longer, which meant that Barrett bought time for me to go in. I was actually being told not to push in here. However, I noticed that at, at least three of the people on the enemy team were less than half health. And I believed in my ability with Shigoki, with the side dodge headbutts, and my general anti-gank ability to be able to stall for as long as possible. And now, this this entire time I'm on the enemy point, they literally have nowhere to heal. You see, like, Haren's trying to run into minions to die. He ends up getting killed by a teammate, getting more renown. I'm stopping the heal of the Warlord. I'm stopping the heal of the JJ. I've literally managed to stop all of their heals now for like 30, 40 seconds. I will eventually get pushed off of the point. However, now I've bought enough time for Silencer and for Tetsuo to rotate into the point and continue uh, contesting to pick up some extra kills. And I also died off the point, so I didn't feed any Defender Renown as well. It's also quite important when you do make these pushes, if you do find yourself in a situation where you aren't going to be able to, you know, like actually win the fight and you know that you're going to end up dying, it's, it's best to disengage as soon as possible. Preferably early if you can actually get away, because that's ideal. But if you know there's no way you can get away, at least try to get off the point before you end up going down which is what ended up happening in that situation. I was thrown off the point, I was plunged, but I bought enough time for my team to actually come in and pick up a couple of extra kills. And because we have the mid lane here, we actually have a, a good enough position to disengage from if we need to go in here, which is what Tetsu is doing there. I come off with a respawn. Shigoki obviously has really fast rotations. Silencer actually ends up uh, ledging one person, and then I'm not sure why he tried to guard break someone he wall splatted. It was a bit of a dumb decision, but he was on one HP anyway, so it wasn't really a lot he can do in that situation. He did a really good job to ledge one person on low health anyway after being cut off with the trapdoor. But that was like the general idea of that push is mm. that uh, Barra, Barra pushed the home point, seeing that multiple of them were low, which forced them to go and contest the cap rather than going and pushing our own home after winning the team fight. Barra disengaged on when he had like half health left. However, I came in on full health and I saw that multiple people were below half health. And a general rule of thumb I have is that I usually try to look to push 
onto enemy points when at least two people are uh, below half health. Because a general a general misconception is that people will try to push enemy points after they've picked up a couple of uh, a couple of kills on the enemy team, which in general isn't a very good time to go in because if you end up pushing an enemy point, you've got two kills and you've got like a couple of other enemies who are fairly high health. You it's very unlikely you're going to be able to kill two enemy players within say about fifteen to twenty seconds uh, if they have a lot of health, which means that the the respawns are going to be coming back in and both of them are going to be having full health. So you're going to find yourself in a situation, particularly on these line linear maps where you're fighting on a home point where the enemy can rotate in faster than your teammates can, you're going to have to deal with these road like constantly trickling in like rotations. So that's why I always emphasize being aggressive on pushes dependent on uh, enemy players health bars rather than actual like picks we get on the enemy team i think it's a lot more important to actually make your decision on when you should push based on players health pools and also to try and keep people low health as well like if let's say you have a situation you know where like say two people are one bar and two people are full health if you have the available health on your team to you know play a bit more you know not necessarily like you're not in desperate need of killing off these people because you have multiple people on your team who are low health. Let's let's say you know two enemies are one bar, two enemies are full, and then your team are all like seventy five or higher health. You can probably actually play it safe, not kill off those uh, those two low health um, characters. Try to push the point and try and do more damage to the players that have a lot of health because you want to try and kill people within the same kind of time frame, not just because, you know, you, you don't want those respawns coming in and you want to buy yourself enough time to capture the point, but also because you can get Acer and Acer and something else which uh, can mm. lead to a very heavy snowball when it comes to yeah. your feeds. So Ace, by the way, for anybody who doesn't know what it, so we've talked a little about Defender Renown bonus, which obviously if you kill an enemy on your own point, but there are lots of different kinds of Renown bonuses, and one of them is Ace, which is you get it once you're if everybody on team gets it if everybody on the enemy team is dead at the same time so it's basically a bonus for getting a team wipe and it's considerable it's 20 renown i think per player right yep uh, and i mean that's a that's a big a big chunk that's half of the way to getting your tier one for example um, roughly all right it's, it's essentially it's the same amount of renown as you'd get for like a heavy or a Hybrid, killing an enemy on your home point with all four of your team there, so it's yeah. a lot. And of and it also, you, I think you get team kill streaks as well. So if you get a spec, Ace can often be like on top of getting a team triple kill, which also gives everybody huh? renown as well. I thought so. Yeah, getting kills at all at the same time is quite beneficial, all, all in a short window. Very beneficial. Yep. Um, I just want to bring about. Yeah, sorry. I was just going to say, like, if you actually play this clip, I believe I try to push the point again because of the same thing. Like, I, even though one person is dead, two of them are actually low health at the moment. So I actually called out that this was a perfect time to push. I don't mind eating the damage mm -hmm. from the, the JJ just to get onto the point. And we have them breaking and we get, again, we have them in this, like, situation where two are low. I'm getting ganked, but... Again, I'm preventing the heals, and this is a perfect time as well because it doesn't matter at this point if we kill off the low health players early because we don't need we don't need to worry about Ace Renown because it's already you know at the end of the game Renown doesn't matter at this point, and it's also a case of we don't need to kill everyone around the same time to capture the point because it's breaking. So we yeah. want to kill the low health players as quickly as possible, which is what happened. The Shigoki came in; they couldn't heal because I pushed the point, and I initiated the point purely because I saw that two were low and. Again, that's like my general philosophy is as soon as I see yeah. two like how people are low, I, tr I decide to push based off of that. Yeah, so I'm going back to it's actually we've talked a lot about a lot about renown and the importance of defender renown, but actually this match in particular ended as a very low renown game. Um, sorry, I've got some noise in the background. There was only I think you only had your tier two, only yeah, only Tetsuo had his tier four. Nobody had. I think what did Silence have tier? Silence had just had just got his tier three, but he would have got that from the final kill of the game, essentially. Um, so it was a very low renown game. But that so does that does that impact your your decisions to push more or less when it's a like low renown? I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say the overall renown totals make that much of a difference. Um, the only time it really makes a big difference, like let's say for Jean who has his T4 or you know like Warlord's got five class, typically we want we want to try and engage in a team fight in the minion lane. And 
suit, like if we, you know, hit even like one person with a good flask or a good job duty for it, we immediately start looking to push the other people as well to prevent heals, to prevent people from getting from getting the cleanse or you, fire damage over time. You're breaking up a little bit, so you can, you can sorry, repeat that for us. I, I know it's just me, but you're breaking up. I was, uh, I was just saying that um, the only time like the renown really comes into play that uh, e either, you know, like if I've got my juggernaut, I'm willing to take more risky pushes right same with same with barrack because obviously it just buys you 10 seconds of guaranteed stall the i think the only way you're reasonably going to die is if you let yourself get like gb'd by a shug and you get team balled off of the ledge or a warlord's crashing charge and you're yeah. like continuously and change you off of the ledge but other than that like you're going to be very safe to push a point even in more unfavorable situations uh if you've got things like say like phalanx if a like if you've got a jj on your team who's running phalanx or a sense or you know if you play if a bp is on the team you ha and he has umbral you can make like riskier pushes based off of these feeds but the the biggest one i would say is uh if you have like a an offensive feat you know like a fire flask a uh, fear itself a jean t4 like particularly the jean and warlord t4s if you end up landing like a good flask or t4 it's usually immediately a time to look to push like not actually to fight and try to win the fight in the minion lane if that feat lands it's a perfect time to push because you don't want to let them heal and you want to push the advantage you're more than likely going to have a big hp lead uh, after landing uh, a tier 4 feat like that so you want to push mm. that advantage yeah so this is uh is a, is a concept that the um brogler or zero crate mentioned a lot when back when he was playing, about how you can, si you can sort of consider uh, the game as a sort of resource management type thing, and you are trying to uh, maximize the value you get from using your powerful resources like in, or, or, protect, or prevent the enemy from... So if, you, if you're using your health to stall out, you're using your health as a resource to stop the enemy healing up. And getting their resources, or in this case, you've used a big, you've used your tier four, which is a big, again, a big renown, a big uh, resource investment, and you want to make sure you get the maximum return on that resource, um, that investment. As it makes sense, uh, it's not necessarily about getting the maximum return out of the, your, you know, your resource. It's it's about the fact that pushing an enemy home point is, you know, it's it's inherently risky because of the massive renown gain potential for the enemy team. So you, you want to push when the enemy team is missing enough health for it to not, not so be such a risky push anymore. Like your advantage is big enough to either equalize or even overtake like the advantage that the enemy team has being their home point. And when you land these firefights or like the Shaman Huti Fours, like basically every single team fight you have should be thought of in terms of like total health balls, right? So like obviously no character has 100 HP, but if you think of like both teams have four characters of 100 HP, the total health ball of each team is going to be 400 HP. If you hit like four people with a 50 damage attack, that's 200 health. You've just taken half of the health of the enemy team off, which it automatically makes it a really good time to go and push the enemy home point because yeah, it's going to be the enemy's home point. They're going to have the potential for big renown gain if they kill you, but the likelihood of them actually killing multiple of you when you have double their HP is very, very low. Obviously, there are other things that can factor this in, like defensive feeds, etc. But um, it's it's as a general rule of thumb, that's why you're pushing. Like it, it, as soon as these feeds land, you put yourself in the perfect position. Like first of all, they're forced to go back to their home point to heal, so you instantly want to push to prevent that heal. But secondly, it's not even like they can counter push onto your home point and make it more difficult to push the point because they've just been hit with big damage. And if they simply try and push off, let's say you only hit two people for like 50 or 100 damage and then the other two people are unscathed and are full health. If the two like full health people go to try and counter push, well, it's going to be like an equal fight on your home point. So your team still have the advantage yeah. and then you're also leaving your lower health teammates to try and also full health people on your own home point so you're putting yourself in a very like lopsided situation so basically you you want to use you, you the reason why you want to push any home point is because it's a you're counteracting the advantage of the potential defender and quite heavily and you're also pushing in a situation where you know your team has big like very very healthy health lead and you're also doing it when there isn't really an opportunity for the enemy team to counter push or at least there's not a good opportunity because counter push in that situation if anything is just making it easier for you to go to the enemy home point whilst you also stall on your home point mm -hmm. all right so we move, let's move to the next example um again i, I can't remember all of these ones i've I picked out some examples from l collectors but these are ones that freeze picked out um so we'll go here uh this is the grand finals against um against again l collectors uh from 
EU qualified too. So I'll just full screen so you can see that it's easier. So I, okay, uh, this one I think uh, actually is a, is a discussion. Maybe maybe it's uh, about Solips pushing his this point as a really as an example of a really bad push there. Um, yeah, if you if you actually go back to the very beginning. Yeah. Do you want to go to the beginning of the whole match, or just no? The... Just that initial push, like yeah. just before he decided to push. If you look when he pushes, you'll notice that he does something that goes against my general rule that I mentioned. He he goes to push when I have just respawned and Tetsuo is just about to respawn, and there's only one person who's actually half health, which is Barrack, and he's pushing when Silence is able to contest the cap. So he's literally trying to push the enemy home point when he himself isn't full. And first of all, I'm respawning and I'm a Shigoki, so I have the fastest route, like rotation. So I'm going to be able to get to that point extremely quickly. And he immediately finds himself in a situation with two full health characters, with a Shigoki as well, who's actually a pretty good ganker, uh, when he has absolutely no support. Yeah. So, like, he basically pushes in a situation that goes completely against the general rules that I mentioned, and it completely... Like, he doesn't give Defender Renown, because he gets Demon Board off the point, but he's still giving, like, Kill and Assist Renown to Heavies as well, mm -hmm. who get the most Renown for Assist. Like, it's, it's, it's 10 Renown, it's a decent chunk. So... It so was... just after that, actually, we also have then you went and pushed... So just after getting that kill, it looks like you then also put... So here, you off the side, you also go and push their home point. Yes. So is, I, what was your thinking this, behind this, this? This this wasn't an actual push. This was a fake rotation. Like mm -hmm. I faked the rotation to A to pull both uh, Setmix and Mina off of mid, force them all to go back to the home point, so we could easily clear mid with absolutely no con like contest and to get mid back, so we would have mm. the advantage of fighting the minions. So that wasn't actually a, like a, an, a genuine push. It was just a that fake was a push fake out, to yeah. pull them out mid. Yeah. So do you think? So how would that have if they had sort of? read that that was a, a fake out as it were and only sent one person to contest contest you would you have then like fought that one person to try and cap their home point or would you then have uh pulled back out again if let's say if your push wasn't successful so they can see just about the um solops is coming off spawn as well so they go they both go here to go and well, the the like the I guess the interesting thing there is like the only thing they could have done is if like either Mina goes back and Setmix stays mid or Setmix goes back and Mina stays mid. Um, I and, think. I mean, they they think they, could... they would have. Do you think these guys would have got off? Uh, Tote Toti could have gone and got A before you captured it if they didn't go. I am not too sure. Whereabouts is he? Uh, no, he, like to Toti probably could have uh, could have contested the cap. Hmm. So like they they probably could have stayed mid or at least like pulled back a little bit. Uh, they didn't need to pull back uh, that hard because yeah. I'm pretty sure that Toadie being a Shigoki was going to be able to get there and contest the cap. Obviously, he he would have to get onto the point when I'm at the entrance of it, which obviously gives me a, you know, a lot of opportunities to potentially you know land a lot of damage. Like whether mm. Toadie tries to roll onto the point, whether you know like just it's it's basically just a really good opportunity for whoever is the one defending the point whenever someone's trying to get on the point so who knows what could have happened but still they probably did not need to both go back there because as i said it did give us the opportunity to just clear mid freely uh yeah. without any um without any risk or threat of like being punished every time we tried to clear the minions mm -hmm. and we managed that and when they actually came back for the team fight we ended up you know, getting to fight in our means, and we won the fight again, which again buys us more time to you know get more point generation off of mid, um, and we also get more renown for more takedowns as well. Yeah. So we're just basically pushing. As, as you can see, we have a lot more renown than the enemy team. Like uh, yeah. pretty much, we have three people at like two hundred or just over two hundred, whereas they only have like two people that are close to that. So it's, like, it's not like a massive renown advantage, but we're basically just we're in, we're ensuring that our renown advantage is slowly getting higher, and there's. Like they they aren't getting any opportunities to you know make up that difference. Mm -hmm. So, as particularly with characters like JJ who have feats that can support his whole team, he, like it's not necessarily in a massive way. You know, like his tier one, his tier two give like damage boosts, but they aren't exactly massive. But you know, you can use one after another, and if you get that before the enemy team does. I mean, Legion wasn't even playing JJ in this match, so he doesn't really have the same benefit that uh, we have with the JJ. Um, but when you have characters like that, even their like lower level feats can can really boost up your overall team strength because JJ basically yeah. gives his team like pre CCU levels of damage for a good thirty seconds of a fight uh, with his tier one and tier two. So tr trying to just keep on edging up that uh, 
that renown advantage without giving it to the enemy team, even mm. if it's like really small margins, can actually make a really big difference. So, do you ever try? T- so, we talked a bit about like how you try and push when they are low health, um, when you've got like. In- do you ever go into a team fight and try to not kill them in order in order to give yourself a better opportunity to push? If you just get into low health and then and then push from there. Yeah, actually, I touched on that when I was talking about it previously, how okay. we will try to, like, if we, if we are in a position where we have a lot of health and we can actually, you know, kind of play it a little riskier in the sense that, like, like, for example, if we're in a situation where, like, two on one bar, two are full health, and all of our team's half health, we don't really have the, um, like, we don't really have the luxury of trying to deal more damage to the full health players to try and increase the likelihood of getting Ace Renown and also killing everyone within the same time window to get, give us time to actually capture the point without worrying about respawn trickling in. However, if like all of our team is, say, like 75% or higher health and the enemy team is, you know, two one bars and then two full health, we have the health totals to actually play it a little bit more, you know, risky and to actually mm-hmm. try to... Uh, to actually try to deal more damage to those high health players before intentionally killing off the lower health players, so we can try to stack up the kills for those, uh, like you know, the ace renown, triple kill renown, and um, also to push the point and force the fight on the point, so we can kill multiple people together and give ourselves more time to actually capture the point. E- even if we don't kill everyone at exactly the same time, if we can like mm-hmm. kill three people within a similar window, it actually it, you know it'll give us like 10, 15 seconds just to try and gank one person. So we have quite a lot of time then to try and finish off one person to get the point back, versus constantly having to deal with the the respawns. Yeah. So, conversely, do you ever try? I mean, I've I've heard it mentioned about uh, um, staggering, trying to stagger revives, uh, trying to stagger respawns, in particular in the context when you're defending a point. I guess it's the opposite of pushing a point. But if you are in a situation where, um, let's say you've got a double cap and the opponents are trying to push one point, you do you then try and do the opposite and try and kill people one by one. So they don't get a chance to push in all at once again, or is that something I'm just getting mixed up? With? Not really, no, because you you still want to kill the enemy as quickly as possible because you don't want them to be pausing your point regeneration, right? So okay, you, yeah. You want to get your point generation back. You want to get the quick defender renown, and then you want to get back into mid, get mid back, so they're not getting too much point regeneration if they've captured mid off of you know being able to push your home point. Mm-hmm. You don't really want to be keeping the enemy team on your home point for a long period of time because. The longer the longer you take to actually kill uh, the enemy on your point, you're basically just slowing down your overall like renown per minute, right? And your points per minute, which you don't want that. You want to have yeah. as high of a point and renown total per like minute or per second, however you want to calculate it as possible. So no, I wouldn't I wouldn't say ever intentionally delaying killing the enemy team when they have like mid and their own home point and are pushing yours is really ever a good idea. Okay, fair enough. Sorry, I, I maybe I miss miss uh, miss memory something. So I've got an example, uh, an example here, which is let me see if it's um, okay. So this is from later on. It's in um, the uh, I think it's the f- grand finals of qualifier three where L L collectors went through, and we've got a bit which I thought was quite a good push um, from Mina B going up to push C and stalled for quite a long time on the on their points uh, i think it is this, this bit yeah all right so mina b hands up here um i mean i know this is not one of your matches so it's difficult for you to talk about but they don't i don't if i remember correctly they don't end up capturing this point they just sit they're just fighting on it and even though they give quite a lot of defender renown because a few of them do die on the point by they manage to fight on this point for such a long time that they get a, a very big point uh sorry i said point too many times <laughs> confusing myself they get a very big hard point lead because of every now and again somebody rotates out to a to heal and is boosting that whole time um is this sometimes like it is probably what i'd consider a bit of riskier push because if we see at this i can't remember at the start of this they weren't all like low health um as you mentioned but i mean in- they kind of were because oh, there was okay. only one person defending the point, and it was the guy that Mina pushed, who was on what one bar of health. If you go back to the start of the push, and like one was just about to respawn, but another one was literally in the middle of an execution, so he was going to be out for quite a long time as well. So, like, 
Yeah, if you go, if you see like here, yeah, where M Mina's on C point, Mina is literally one v one in the Shigoki, who's one bar. One is only just respawned, and the other one's just been executed, so he's going to be out for like you know twenty seconds, uh, even more than that from the beginning of the execution. So it was still a good time to push with the. Uh, with you know only one person to contest who was the the low health and then the the respawn comes in but the other one is out of the game for like 20 seconds so you have more time to try and use that numbers advantage to try and push the uh like i don't know why like uh legion's here like legion should not be in this fight he's way too low particularly when he has both set mix and you know toti able to rotate in with him you yeah. kind of stayed around in this fight for too long given uh, the enemy team too much of an opportunity to try and uh, to try and kill him yeah, like, for example, like right there, he got a parry and he could have left the point, but instead he just gives the enemy team more of an opportunity to get more some defender renown out of him. Yeah. So, uh, th th I guess that touches on if you make a push and it, that push isn't, isn't good, or if there's a problem like in the middle of a push, and you have, you basically, when do you want to leave a push? Um, I mean, you should basically leave a push as soon as you realize that you are no longer able to like you're no longer in a position that favors your team enough to counteract the advantage of them the defender and the advantage mm -hmm. so like if you, if you find yourself pushing a point and you say like you have two let's say you have two players who are like 75 percent half after a team fight so you've lost some health but you have a lot you push a point you know you've got like you say two people are dead like and they only have one full health player on the point so you push the point you might be able to get a quick gank off right especially if you've got like a shigoku or particularly like a gladiator if you've got like an actual hard ganker uh, you, so you push the point, you want to try and get a good gank, but then if these respawns respawn and they come in and you have two ha full health players on top of the like the like the other player who's already on the point, even if you get this other player down to like one bar of health and both of you still have like you know like half your health bars, it's no longer a favorable fight because you're outnumbered. They also have a higher health total health pool than you, and you're also fighting on their point. Like I would say, like even like rotating these two out with two full health people to continue stalling on the point is still going to be risky because even though the, the one guy is low health, I mean he can maybe kill himself, come back and off respawn full health, and you're still stuck in an even fight. You know, two v two, both full health on a point they control, which still gives them the advantage. Or maybe the guy with low health just ends up trying to isolate someone in a gank whilst the other full health player just tries to peel the whole time. So in like in a basically you should always try to disengage from a point on an enemy point like as soon as you realize you are no longer in a fight that you have the like a big enough advantage to counteract the, yeah. the defender renown advantage. Uh, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Okay. Um there's another example which I'm gonna try and pull up. It might take me a second to find it. Um so Please, Karen, talking about some other things if you couldn't think of them. <laughs> um, I think it's here. Actually, I might stream a different window. Um, it was. It was so the. Um, all right, I will uh, switch the screen I am showing. This is from. I haven't loaded this somewhere, but it's easier if I show them here. Okay, so this is a situation where. You are the players here were forced to push an enemy point because it starts off um, because they're in a double cap situation. So here, I, I think that Darius here dies very quickly as well. Um, they're going to be in a point where they have well, they've got two players, but they will shortly have all four off the point, and they have to decide which of these two points they are going to push. Um, so. In a, in a situation where you have to be, where you have to push a point, and you don't have a choice about pushing, you don't have a choice that you have to push, but you have a choice about which one you want to push. What are your normal um, decision making processes? But actually, this isn't the one I wanted to show. <laughs> oh well, but it's 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 the same situation. So we can. Do you think they made here? Do you think they made the right decision to to um? push into C, or do you think they should have gone A instead? Yeah, the, um, like, in general, like, if, if you find yourself in a situation where, you know, you're triple capped, they, you know, the, the enemy team have gone two and two to defend both the side points, um, you will typically want to push all four onto one point, particularly the point that, you know, is considered the stronger point, the faster rotate to mid, which, of course, is C on Temple Gardens, considered a more valuable point than A because of the faster rotations. 
So you, you, you want to push all four on one point because obviously if they are split, you know, if they are split two and two, if you if you all push on the C point, you, you are at least going to have like, you know, 10, 15 seconds whilst the other two are rotating in being two to one. So you get like a lot of opportunities maybe to try and get some like a quick gank off to heavily skew the, the health bar in your team's favor. So that's that's why people usually do it. Um, I mean, in this particular instance, when Tourette's and and someone on the spawn, or I think it was uh, Franz Bonaparte, they respawned. There was, I think there was one person on A who was about half. So they actually probably would have been better off like, pushing A as soon as those two respawned to go and contest the heals. So they had a more favorable situation. But assuming it's like everyone in the enemy team's full from the, the triple kick, it's usually a good idea. So they push the minion lane first, capture the minion lane, and then you send all four to whatever point you consider more valuable. So, you know, like, for example, on Overwatch, it's, again, there's the, the C point on Temple. It's the C point. So that's what you'll typically do. You you could, if if you as a team, are, you know, um, a lot more confident in your 2v2 ability, like, if, if you're just so sure that both, like, your 2v2, like, like players or like combinations that you have are just far superior than the enemy team, you could easily just send two like two sets of 2v2s to go on both points as well if you, if you believe like if you believe your 2v2s are superior enough on the other team to the point where like they can also counteract that defender renown advantage right because mm. if you if you believe your 2v2s are equal skill with the enemy team and you send them to go and fight an enemy point and they're winning 50 percent of the time while well, the enemy team's going to be winning that all the time because if you if you if you trade 50 50 on the enemy's point they are always going to be winning because they get so much more renown because of defender renown but if you if you're confident enough, like, let's say like maybe you think your two v twoers can win seventy five percent of the time, then you you could always send to, like two two v twos to both the same points if you're that confident that your mm -hmm. you know your team are that much better at two v twoing. But in general, the preferred tactic is just to push mid and then send everyone to whatever the you know stronger preferred point is and try and make the most of that numbers advantage before the other two can rotate in. Yeah. Do you ever try and send three to a point and then send one to stall the other two so you can have a, like, you put your person you send in a gank situation, but you then have a, an advantage 3v2 on the other point? Or is that something you'd just find too risky? Yeah, I don't wouldn't really see too much of a, a point in that because, I mean... You're not going to be able to stall two people by yourself because one's ever like is inevitably going to be able to peel. So even if you stall, it's not going to be for very long. Mm -hmm. um, and if, even if you manage to somehow get both of them stuck on you, I mean, there's no guarantee you're going to be winning a three v two in a super fast amount of time. If you, particularly like depending on the characters, if you push a point and it's like Shigoki JJ. And Shigoki has his juggernaut, and you know, JJ's also a really good, uh, like, when he's outnumbered because of his, like, his zone, his, his unblockables. And then you kind of putting yourself in a 1v2 yourself, you're almost, some, sometimes you're just going to end up letting the enemy team gank you quickly, you're going to die, and then they're going to be able to send people in and also benefit off of having, like, a numbers advantage, right? So usually yeah. it's, it's a better idea either to go all in on the numbers advantage on one point, or, as I said, if you're extremely confident that your 2v2ers are like not just slightly better but far superior to the enemy team you could theoretically send you know two sets of 2v2s on both points because if you do it that way if you send you know the two and two then you can at least stop any point generation you know you get the mid lane you send two 2v2s to the side points and you're stopping their point generation from their capture points and you have the mid lane so you're actually getting points for your team whilst doing that hmm yeah, I hadn't thought about that in terms of, yeah, where you're also, you're pushing not just to get a point to heal, but you're also pushing in a way that um, also stores out their point generation. So you're achieving, as those objectives we talked about at the beginning, you're achieving multiple um, of those those things. Mm -hmm. um, so Jonesy, the, that's actually, so Jones mentions what, your thoughts on 3C, 1B? I mean, I think that's pretty much what we talked about beforehand about having one person to stall and... Um, one person to stall the other two, like you stall them coming across, and three people to fight the three v two. And I guess Clutch thought that was all. Anyway, so I have um, something else because we have talked quite a long time, and actually we're only an hour in. I ha I would like to try something else slightly different now. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and I would like us see if we can get a set of scrims going, and then me and Clutch can spectate, and we'll stream the spectating to the dojo and. Um, 
I'll try and record as well, or we can go back on. I'm not sure I might manage that. My PC can manage that, but I'll try anyway. And then we will talk about it, and then we'll come back and do a VOD review of that one. And we can talk in focusing in particular on uh, the pushes that people make when you put the right time to push or not. And then we can, um, if we have still our time, they can do another scrim, and we can like compare the compare notes as it were on the the on that. Does that sound good? Sounds right to me. Sounds right to you. I'm going to assume that science from everybody else means that it's good. Uh, let's get a set of scrims going in that case. Okay. Um, try and... So, hope... is anybody... Hit that? Well, invoice chat. Uh, try and... Let's try and organize eight people for a scrim. We have got enough people in chat, so we should be able to get all... Uh, get uh, some scrims going. Stag, you, are you up for it? Um, Rico, you said you might be up for scrimming. Kintama, Zoom is down. Okay, this might take a little bit of time to organize, but that's just how it is. Um, oh, I'm muted. I didn't realize. Right, I'll load up the game. I've probably got, as long as I've got one of you on um, the friends list, I can spectate. Um, yeah, Ken, maybe if you want to join in as well, you can get some learning as well. I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm down to do it. All right. I haven't played in a few days. That's fine. Um, yeah. That's all right, I've QK. You can come proper, in as well. Um, I've never like, done the proper competitive match myself. So it's going to be a new experience for me. QK asks if Clutch can answer your pressing question, which is, are you better than Faram? Um, what do you say that, Clutch? <laughs> Wait, who, answered, who's, who asked that? It's just QK. Being, yes, of course, King Mike, you can join. Yeah. Um, uh, no, it's just QK memeing. Um, why, my game just closed itself down. Yes, Great. I am better than Faram in every area of the game. <laughs> Are you better at making uh, uh, clickbait thumbnails, though? That is not part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Destroyed with facts and logic. That's absolute facts and logic have been deployed. Um, all right, so uh, if maybe Stag can set up the lobby and start inviting people, put your you plays in the dojo voice text. Um, and then we okay, Stag doesn't want to set up lobby. All right. Um, okay, Stag is going to do the yeah. All right, my bad. Um, so maybe Rico, you can set up the lobby. Uh, whoever, whoever's in game now, set up the lobby and start inviting people. I, I haven't loaded up. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm, just gonna, I'm saving my drawing. All right. Um, okay, Zoom me. I'll add you. Maybe if you're in game, um, or QK can start. It's always a little bit. Um, Ad hoc organizing scrims in the match whilst we're on the chat stream, but you know, we can carry on chatting. If anybody has any questions for Clutch, now's a good time to ask them whilst we're trying to sort this out. Um, feel free if you have any any other things. How, how big is the most recent update? Oh, it's on 20% already. Never mind. There we go. Um, yeah, I may or may not be downloading a tiny update. <laughs> right, um, see some of friends. Okay, so we've got QK's. Um, what's your? Oh, QK. Hey there, QK. How are you going? <clears throat> uh, I'm doing fine. I'm just. I'm a bit unsatisfied with the answer. You know, I thought Faram was really good at anti ganking. <laughs> well, as you see, Clutch was confident enough in his anti ganking to go on to a point with three competitive players and stall there. For his teammates as well, so um, that's a pretty. Well, we'll we'll call it a draw for now. <laughs> okay. We don't need to call it a draw. I've already played against Faram in a tournament before. Oh, there we go. Yeah, but have you played against his brother Marath? <laughs> yes, I teabagged them both at the same time. Damn. It. Um. <laughs> All right. So QK, um, what's your you play again? Uh, it's QK, like uh, the full. Well, QK stands for, you know. Okay. Um, start inviting people if you can. We'll get this uh, lobby set up. I'm not sure how many we have. Um, uh, Spaniel, you can invite me, can't you? Oh, I'm not. I'm going to spe be spectating. Although I, I get. I know, but you can send me the invite. Can't you? I can send the invite, but it wouldn't be. It'd be. It'd be inviting to me rather than inviting to the lobby. I mean, I could play if we haven't got enough people. Um, 
Uh, so so do you want? So you want me to be the person who is inviting everybody to the lobby? If that's if that's possible, QK. Yeah, that's fine. I just uh, want to make sure. Um, so how many people have we got? We've got Rico, QK, Zitsume, King Mike said he was up for it. Uh, well, that's only, I mean, that's only five. Um, and uh, Nish, Nishiki Enrai is also up, so that's six. Um, anybody else up for it? Um... You became a you. Are you available to, to uh, play as well? Maybe that's all right if you're not. Um, let me ping Senka. Maybe, Senka yeah, let's me... get some other people. Then I'll just ping some I'll ping scrims as well. So if you've got anybody in here, that's... my mic arm is being such a scrims. Uh, Kintama, are you are you around? Um, oh my god, the Discord overlay is taking on half my screen. Uh, you send a friend request to QK. QK, can you write down your or QK will write or send you a friend request as well. Um, I will one. write it down. Just uh, okay. It's that, there we go. It's QK as as the whole words, or I guess. Um, yeah, Stag has it there. Where have you put it? It's in Dojo voice text. So Q U E U E. Uh, or he'll invite you. Just add him as friends, and then he'll invite you. Um, oh, I almost got it right. I just forgot E is at the end of each thing. <laughs> so let me know, QK, how many people you've got in your lobby, and if we need more, I will join as well. Um. Uh. We'll start from the beginning when 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 we do start. Okay, Sag, like I can do the spectating. It's fine, unless of course I'm playing, in which case I obviously can't do that. Um, well, Stag, uh, Stag could come be our laggy eighth, so we can get an advantage on my team. Let me just check my friends list. Have I appeared on your friends list, QK? Uh, give it a second. Whenever For Honor's at the title screen, it doesn't like to open the UB Connect. Add a few more voice channels so you can um can do here now. Oh hey, hey there, Kintama. Do you want to join these scrims? We're gonna have a uh, scrim. We're gonna talk about pushes and so so on. Oh um. Not, not today. I'm tired. That's okay. Fair enough. No pressure. Although, depending so if you need pressure, more people. the number one is in front of me right now. Well, that's all right. It's uh, you know, it's, it's getting <laughs> easier to judge you. I'm gonna yeah, judge you, but yeah, we're gonna not. think that's gonna help. So it's a it's a learning opportunity. Oh, hey, hey there, Deba. You how you doing? I mean, I I, I wouldn't hey. worry. This is actually my first scrim. Are you up for um, joining some scrims, Deba? Yep, yeah, of course. Cool. All right. Okay, so uh, QK, you can invite Deba as well. What's your you play again, Deba? Um... Wait, what? No, no shot. I just put your. Um... Okay, we got Nishki, we got. I put uh... it in, my, in the in the business scrims. Main scrims. Oh, okay, great. Um... Right, so I'll just copy that up for in case okay. All right, we've got Lord Skadar, Skaldar as well. Um That's Debas. Lord. There's a lot of lords, oh my goodness. Um How many lords are there? I, I typed in Lord and I've got like like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lords. I think that's just ten. The num is the number of people you're allowed to just 
uh, ping. <laughs> um, oh, you invited me. I'm an idiot. All right, so yeah, just uh, QK, let us know when you've got the lobby up and ready to go. Um, uh, King Mike is showing up as offline for me. I don't know why I'm offline. Sometimes that's how it happens. Um, whilst we are waiting for things to go, <laughs> Lord Racist, goodness gracious. <laughs> um, Clutch, are you going to? What are your thoughts about people picking Berserker recently? In um... oh yeah, I mean, people have literally been picking Berserker because I was the one who started playing him. Have you been playing Berserker? Yes. Oh, I've cool. Been playing him in pickup scrims to replace Warlord. Oh, you know, actually, I saw I tuned into one of your um, tuned into one of your streams and saw that. So I just I just assumed at the time that you were just doing yeah you know, pickups and not. <laughs> Um, like serious ones. So, on your team, are you going to be, are you going to play in Jigoki or are you going to play Berserker, or do you think Barak's going to go to Berserker? Oh, oh I've got no idea. Barak did really seem very excited at the idea of playing Berserker. He doesn't really believe in the pick. I'm just going to be sticking with Shigoki because no one else Fair wants enough. to play Shigoki. Shigoki diff. No one wants to play Shigoki. Shigoki is such a monster, though. They just find right, the ball. So, if we get uh, Mike in here and then Scalder, we should have seven. Okay. Oh, Dem is there as well. Lord Dem, do you want to play? Small. Oh. Small over the place. Donut world. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I thought Lord. Oh, you're Lord Stag. Oh, crying out. <laughs> Loud Stag. <laughs> Change yourself to Lord Stag, and I thought you were Dem for a second. Just a green name with right, Lord. Send one to you, Zutsume. Are we just all changing our names to Lord? Please don't. <laughs> Lord, my life watch my sir. Please. I kind of want to join in. Just, uh, <laughs> it's not them. Nice. <laughs> waiting for all the invites I sent out to get back to me. Um. Will we then have enough people for a lobby, or do you want me to join in as well? See, uh, QK, Nishki, Rico, Debat, Scalder, Mike, Zutsume. I wasn't counting. Is that no? That's not <laughs> seven. That's yeah. So we need one more. All right. In that case, I will join as well. You can invite me. Um, won't promise to be any decent. We'll just um, set up and we'll just go like random teams, and we can just jump into the team. On, I mean, it does mean I can't uh, spectate, but I guess Stag's going to spectate, and he'll stream for... Can he stream for Discord as well, or...? Okay. I'm trying to think how we're going to do it to be able to, be able to record the VOD um, as well. Or maybe Clutch, do you think you'd be able to um, spectate the match and record it, your point of view, and then you have a something you can talk about? Uh, I mean, sure, if you need me to. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if you've got me on your friends list, though. So, oh, or... hope, hopefully I'm not too laggy, because uh, I am downloading the Back for Blood beta at the moment. Oh, fair enough. Um, Same, but I paused it. Just trying to think how we can get a recording of the spectator mode as well. So, yeah, we'll we'll just drag into Team 1 and Team 2. Um, and again, when I think QK is going to set up the lobby. Yeah, lobby is ready. I was just turning off gear perks. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and then we'll put set randoms. Uh, we need to ideally work out somebody to, uh, oh, yeah, clutch. Have you? I think I've sent you a friend request a long time ago, but I'm not sure if that's showing. Um, yeah, I probably declined it. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> uh, oh, it's just straight donut order. Yeah, no, that, that's fair. Um, okay, you want in that case, could you add me and then, uh, uh and I'll get your friend request so you, so you can spectate I, somebody in the lobby, basically. Should I just do start match and scramble it? Uh, yeah, yeah, basically, basically. I just before we start, I would like to make sure we've got eyes on the match so we can actually have something to watch and and talk back about it. Otherwise, it's kind of defeats the purpose of it, doesn't it? Um, I'm filthy Spaniel, by the way. Um, uh, what are we doing exactly? Because I was uh, I was told this was. 
Uh, yeah, we're gonna do some. We're gonna do some scrim. We're gonna do a set of scrim. Well, one scrim essentially, one match, and then we're going to, uh, whilst it's going on, hopefully we'll have somebody watching it, um, and then we can talk about it. I guess actually, you can probably also talk. Um, we'll have it open on Twitch. I guess you can watch on Twitch. Stag Spectator. Oh crikey. Um, Oh shit, yeah. Ping Team's alright, I'm gonna go Goki in that case. Make sure I've got the smoke bomb on. No, 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 shit, fuck. Mm. Oh. I, I was too busy organising things, I didn't have time to change my loadout, I've got smoke bomb on, I just won't use it in that case. Um, just like Zod. Yeah. Just using the cheap feats. <laughs> oh, we got, uh, Skaldor's got smoke bomb as well, okay. Uh, Skaldor, try not to use smoke bomb, because it's banned, but um... Oh, I forgot! Yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, we just, so, me and you won't use our tier twos. Look, it's uh, actually, no, we both, no, no, we'll, we'll restart it. We'll restart it, and we'll both pick um, Jug. We we'll get some more time to get sort out whoever's right. spectating. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, Pujo is also illegal. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. You're right. So yeah, uh, Pujo off. So as soon as it loads in, we'll just uh, reform the lobby. Let everybody pick the legal feats. Uh, oh boy. Make sure that we got our spectator. This is going yeah. great. Uh, somebody can... Oh, Stag, maybe you can try and record at the same time if your PC can handle it. If not, I guess we can try and just... We can't go back. Can we watch a VOD back at the same time as... Um... Oh, okay. All right, fair enough. Um... Hmm. Well, in that case, you'll... We can't... You can stop it and start it again, maybe? Just curious, is Highlander actually viable? No. Um, no. Not really, but Diva makes them viable. <laughs> no. Look, man, Highlander's got that 30 damage bash sometimes. It just hurts. Funny Spearstorm feat, too. Oh, yeah. Spearstorm isn't banned because Highlander isn't picked. <laughs> <sighs> Still not as good as Staggering Blows. <laughs> yeah, Gosh. this is true. All right, we'll head back inside this. Um, we'll look at, I think what we'll, we can probably do is just watch the VOD back on the stream, and then that would that will work. Okay, so QK is going to set the lobby out. No, I don't worry about it. This is this is somewhat. This is the nature of the dojo. It's somewhat ad hoc. Um, look, it's amazing we got a full scrim set together. So yeah. I'm just taking it one thing at a time. I haven't played Goku in ages. I've just been playing um, QK. Um, I've just been playing Kyoshin. So I've I've never even played a comp match. So. Well, it's fine. It's okay. fine. So, um, are we in a position to enter the lobby, or I think we are. Up? We'll just um, well, don't worry about it. Staggers, the eyes aren't up yet. We'll well, we'll just um. Afterwards, I guess we can just watch the vod back on the stream as long as Stag's spectating. Clutch, you can give Stag spectation spectator orders if you want. Um. All right, so it's fine. I, I can spectate myself. Okay. All right, so make sure you guys don't pick Pujo or Smoke Bomb since those are banned in comp. We have gear perks turned off. Uh, teams are random. Uh, now you can pick whatever you want to. Um, all right, let's just move down to the voice, the appropriate voice chats. So I'll drag. He's gone. He's in a reposition. This is going to be streamed on uh, Twitch, right? Yeah. I think All so. Right. Wait, is Hopefully. he not? Oh, wait, he's only just. I'm just...
Attackers captured Zone C. Defenders captured Zone A. Attackers captured Zone A. Defenders captured Zone A. Defenders captured Zone C.
I should have used my tier 4 earlier. <laughs> well, GG's guys. Um, how's it going with the spectating stuff? Is it all still... Seems to be working alright. Oh, thanks. Good, good. I felt like I did pretty well for my first stream, but I feel like Clutch is about to rip me apart. <laughs> That's alright. <laughs> Well, let's carry on with watching a 6v6. Let's carry on with the uh, uh, hear what you guys got to say. So there's quite a lot left in the so Anybody wants to fix who's commentating as if, that's, if you thought you were doing that beforehand. I've been mostly just keeping track of like major mistakes I've seen people making, things that could have been improved on a lot. Mm -hmm. Like for example, the very first fight, uh, the defenders actually ended up winning the initial fight very one-sidedly. Uh, but they they did exactly the opposite of what I was mentioning earlier. They waited until they they practically killed everyone in mid before even trying to push the enemy point, and then they sent two people to go and push the enemy point when you already had three respawners coming in. So they pushed onto the enemy point when they were even outnumbered. So and they literally all ended up dying, giving defender renown as well. So even though they won the initial fight, they ended up down on renown because they, they pushed it completely the, the wrong time and just fed Renown on the enemy point. That was like a, a really big thing I noticed. It was also, uh, I noticed that Nishikai, when he was coming back onto the C point, when the defenders were uh, were trying to cap it at one point, when it was just the Shigoki on low half, uh, the positioning was a little bit off because I know, I know the Shigoki was low, so you wanted to get the kill, but you basically allowed the Shigoki to get a GB on you and a Demon Ball straight off of the point when you had another teammate coming, which allowed them to snatch the point away from you. And you were so desperate to get back on the point, you ended up getting Shigoki hugged, and you were thrown back onto the point and you fed more Defender Renown as well. So it's, it's very important to, first of all, like, if, if it's your point, not to be, like, greedy for the kill. Uh, position yourself so that even if you do end up, like, getting Demon Ball, if you're against a Shigoki, for example, always try and be aware of what's behind you. Like, try not to put yourself in a position where you can get Demon Ball straight off the point and lose it. And also, if you do end up making a mistake, be aware, like, actually have a, like, make sure to try and keep your awareness about it. You have a look around, and if you'd have seen that second person coming in and you saw the point was lost, it would have been best just to leave and rotate. Because you were already, like, below two bars, I believe. And you were never going to be able to win against the... Uh, two people, particularly, I think it was a Centurion who was the second person at one point. So trying to anti-gank an already low health against a gank is an extremely risky thing to do, particularly when it's already the enemy's point. So at that point, you should have just rotated away. It's very important to know, like, if you do end up making a mistake or if you just can get forced knowing when you should leave, or knowing when to not fight any more than you should, because it's a mistake a ton of people make where they continue fighting for way too long and just like give too much renown and they don't want to actually retreat and off from situations which they should. Okay, so we've just had the, uh, on the stream we've just finished the, the match, so now I think if we could work out a way to stream that match again somehow, um, either with Clutch streaming his recording and then we can go over it again, or we can go back on the I can go back on the VOD and spectate and then stream it to Discord and then <laughs> it's a bit scuffed as fuck, but um, how, how, do, how would you like to do to look at the VOD? Um, you managed to record it, Clutch? I was unable to record it. No worries. In that case, what we'll do is I will... Look at the VOD and the screen share? Yep, I'll do. Uh, that's what I'll do, um, which I think is... Uh, right, let me just get that going. Um, watch the VOD. Da -da -da -da. Okay, um, we'll find the point where it goes. Just gotta go for a bathroom break real quick. No worries. Must have been out. Okay, all right. I've got it. Um, I will. Won't, I'll keep it muted so we can still have the. Um, so we won't hit. We can talk about it. Let's share screen. This one, go live. All right, can you guys see the uh, restreamed of the current stream? <laughs> yes. Oh, All right, yeah. perfect. Okay, so we can go over this and talk about it uh, as as we go through. Um, so, yeah. 
well played, guys. By the way, that was quite a fun match. I I had fun anyway. Did I feel like anybody caught my amazing anti gank with uh, my incredibly balanced <laughs> tier four feet? Yeah. Oh yeah. No. I, I think I came in at the end of that. You were just throwing people to the ground on C. Yeah. <laughs> and the, 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 the only thing I saw of you was when you're in that uh, the four v one and you whiffed about four fully sugar heavy. Yeah, that sounds about right. I haven't played Shigeki for ages, so I was <laughs> playing him terribly, but... Uh... It's okay, Clutch Meister is here to make us all better. Yeah, No, I just... I'm, no I'm, I'm here to roast all of you, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I let like me... it. Cope, let me, let me, let me pretend. <laughs> but what we can do is, uh, I can pause the stream at any point, so if you want to, like, talk about something, and then um, I'll pause it, and then we can go on to just say when you want to pause it, um, Clutch. I'm back. Um, okay, just in time for it to start. Real, Sorry, real, I, quick, I, I... real quick question. Mm -hmm. What is the best Shigeki execu uh, uh, execution? It's default one where he um, does the, the hit. belly smash. Yeah, the belly smash. That's the fastest killing, and it's fifty health. So, okay. and it's fastest overall. But it's, oh, I think it might be the fastest killing, but it's the fastest overall, certainly. Okay, thank you. No, no worries. Okay, so here we go. Opening rotations. I suggested to our team that we all three went C, so we could cap it before they got there, but actually none, none of the opponents went there anyway, so then we went yeah, into we, mid. We went to mid to A. So I just ate absolute shit in this team fight. Um, played really badly. Yeah. I got the yeah, as, yeah, as, you, you. as you can see, this is what I was mentioning. You see how there's already two really low. Warmong is also almost under half health. However, nobody even tries to push the enemy point. You, like, you've already killed two. Around about the same time as well, again, it would have been a good time to push because there was a third who was very low. You've killed a third. Instead of pushing the enemy point, you're still sat in mid trying to kill the fourth player. And then the fourth player is practically dead before two people push. But the problem is, is that you're pushing onto a point that's going to end up getting contested. You have two full health respawners. So you're actually in an unfavorable fight here. Even though Spanning ends up eating a ton of damage, even after eating like the double heavy getting onto the point, you like they still have more health than you. And then there's also a third respawner coming in onto a point, you know, that has defender renown. So that's one that dies. That's 60 renown just given to the attacking team because you like you easily could have captured that point. But as I mentioned, it's 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 a very easy trap to fall into, like you wanting to kill people then push, but it's actually so much better to push when you have people low at and to identify when people are low and to know that your team have enough health to actually push without to worrying about your team like losing the fight in mid if you go for the enemy home point. So like you should have pushed there like way earlier and if you decided to stay in mid and kill everyone, then you should have secured mid instead of pushing. So here, everybody was pretty low, and I thought then this would be a good time to push. So just about now, I said, go push A, um, because, yeah, we were behind on points, we needed to cap the point, and there was nobody to um, prevent the... Would you think that was a good push there for A, or do you think it should have... We should have collapsed back onto C? Honestly, the, the kill that was gotten on the low health guy, like around the, uh, the middle lane, you probably could have just kept him at low health rather than killing him. Because if you would have if you would have like decided to push the enemy point, the person who was like in the one v one with the low health guy could have just left to to go and push the point. Mm. Like, and the guy who was on low health, well, he has nowhere to heal, so he either kills himself or he goes somewhere to maybe try and help on the point, and you can try to kill him, you know, closer together with the other players, so you would have had more time to try and capture the point and stop staggered respawns coming in. But yeah, I think I think that in general was a good time to push. One was dead, two were low. So in general, it was a that was a much better time to push than the uh, the first push. You can see an absolutely terribly failing, um, failing a Goki gank there. Um, so we lost that point on A quite quickly afterwards, and then this is uh, yeah, this yeah, so... is where quote Highlander is for wrong came from. So did do you think this here was a good push for um, the blue team here? Uh, I mean, in this situation. I mean, there's not anyone on the A point, right? So, like, when I was watching this, my, my main concern is, like, is someone actually going to end up watching the A point? Like, is the person who's farming mid going to come here as well? Or are they going to, like, do their job and actually, like, watch the A point? Nobody from the, the attack has actually pushed the A point, which could have been a good idea to take some attention off. I mean, like, it's, it's, it's kind of give or takes in this situation. You know, if everyone goes C or... 
you are potentially, you know, getting a ton of defender an hour. But against like better teams, it's probably a good idea to you know push a try and stretch people yeah. out a bit more. Like unless unless it's a situation where there's like multiple. The attack so actually, I did low. off respawn. I did um, push push a because I knew I could see that the Highlander was coming out of this point very low health and going to heal, and so I went to push a as just off respawn. You can see me coming out of the back corner um, because I knew that he'd he'd go there to heal, and then it would be an easy cap. And even though it might lengthen the time we took to take C back properly, I knew it was quite a good push. Yeah, this 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 is this is something you like in general have to be careful of when you're pushing enemy points because obviously like the Highlander, you know, did a really good job stalling. Um, but then because obviously two people went into the point to go and push, that means the Highlander got challenged on A and is now forced into a, a fight with the, like what a full health yeah Goki, which, Goki, which he quickly lost yeah, yeah and you end up getting triple capped so like it like this particular situation was not the uh the best time to go for a push because again like you had someone coming off respawn who was able to go straight away on full health and couldn't test the heal of the player who was already very low so it's like in general you kind of want to make sure you have somebody to defend the home point you do not want someone who's very low to be the only person who's going to be defending your home point because if someone goes to challenge it and they also have to be full health it doesn't really matter what the matchup is like the person with full health is going to be like heavily favored against someone who's less than one ball. so like push pushing that point wasn't necessarily a bad time to push but sending everyone who actually had health and who was able to actually fight Onto the point and leaving just the the Highlander who desperately needed to heal to fight a full like potential full health pusher was uh, not a good idea. So like you always want to make sure in those situations when someone's low, if they're going to be rotating off the point, that there's also someone either you're a hundred percent sure that you know someone's not going to challenge the heal. But on a map like this where it's not linear, you have to be yeah you have to make sure there is someone like who isn't low who is able to you know help out the uh, the low house who are going to heal. Otherwise, what ends up happening happened where you just get triple capped because someone pushes, kills the low health, and then all of your able-bodied players are stuck on the enemy point. Yeah, I was holding revenge because, well, why not? Um, so I think this was when we pushed into C point, and I guess we, we left A uncontested. Uh, which meant we got triple count back in return. Um, I came here. Uh, we had to push somewhere, so I came to this one because I thought, well, there's a guy here we can gank. Um, yeah, that was a good gank. And then, unfortunately, there were like four of us here, which I felt was a bit overkill, especially with two of us being on low health, but we had nowhere to go. So Here we go. Here's the whiff UVs I was on about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, yeah, not my greatest performance ever. I died to random Highlander heavy. Just <laughs> honestly, honestly, in that in that situation when you saw like the, like you you should have not been so tunnel visioned on the one player on the point, but you should have been watching out for when another player came. And if you didn't have an opportunity to land a hug and gank, you should have left the point because you just ended up giving defender a now and again. You could yeah. you maybe could have like gone mid and just just kill you know, myself. Right. Farm some minions and just let the minions kill you whilst you're farming them. So you're actually doing something, and then you can come back, you can respawn with full health, yeah. and come back and help your team. Well, I did respawn with full health and come back and help my team. Here's my uh, incredible anti ganking feat here. <laughs> there, I was like, just kill it with a heavy because he's got a um, super arm, but yeah, it worked out anyway. So we did end up catching the cat at this point, which I think. Was that was then probably quite a good push because I knew they were. That was also a mistake from the warmonger. Whether it was bad communication or what, but they shouldn't have done like a running attack. You should have been GBing for that uh, Shigoku tier four as soon as possible. Yeah. But allowed like you gave the Centurion revenge. You gave him double tag so he wouldn't be able to GB into another heavy uh, for like another five seconds, and then Shigoku just ends up going down. Like you still had a good amount of like what ten fifteen seconds of that tier. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Which, uh, like, when the Shigoki has that feet up, you want to make sure you're making the most of it. You don't want to, yeah. like, give tags or, like, risk parries. So, yeah. I mean, to be fair, it's a kind of a coordination thing. We you know we've played together beforehand. So, um, it's understandable. We didn't have a perfect call there. But so, it goes. So, A, the point push A from there. They were basically left A uncontested. So, that was another just a 
good opportunity for them to go grab it. Um, with lower, with, I guess we didn't have enough people people to to be looking after it. Um, here we got a good view and ball into kill, so that was good work there. Uh, uh, Sorry if I'm saying ah, oh, I'm just talking about the team that I was on because. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, this is where I just ate like three demon balls in a row and just died. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was just trying to get out of there, man. Yeah, <laughs> balling me. So here we had this is like I guess the point where we actually won the match really because I I knew that we were going to be push getting into a position where we would get enough points to be one of them would be break we breaking soon and. This I was, was like, I had my tier four, and I should probably should have just used it. Instead yeah, of this would have been a good tier four opportunity because I knew that we were going to get them low enough that now would be really good. So about now, I was like, someone go push A, um, because we we luck had a very good lucky breaking as well because we a demon you know killed um, him off as they were, as they were breaking, and I think <laughs> just the wave dashing coming out of this man right now. <laughs> yeah, I know he's a nutter. I think here I was like, go go push A. Uh, somebody goes to get it. Yeah. Um, so then, even if we lost mid, they wouldn't be able to unbreak. Um, and of course, there was nobody to contest the push because they were they were all fighting in that fight in mid, and they were low health. So even if they did contest the push, we'd have a, a good chance to to beat them up. Yeah, There's the disadvantage uh, of um, that would have been a, that would have been a good time to to push that you mentioned. No, that's when I no, I'm still mad about that. It's about to kill the cup then. <laughs> Black Brian, I got kunai. <laughs> then I, I, don't, I don't even remember doing that emote. <laughs> in his battle trance. Yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. In my in my battle trance, I was um, bouncing around. Anyway, that puts us with ten minutes left for uh, the dojo. So I think will be a good chance time to wrap it up with some finishing questions. Um, and anything else you'd want to point point out, Clutch? Um... There's not really anything else I want to point out. Like the the main um, the main things I had written down, I wanted to, to touch on that were like you know good examples of the, the general like philosophies I was mentioning earlier. Already touched on. Like just like a very, like a very general rule of thumb is try to push when people are low rather than pushing after multiple people have been killed. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a really good. If, 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 there's, if that's the one thing to take away from this session, that would be it. Um, push when they're low rather than when they're dead. Yeah. Oh, Zazumi, I'm really glad you enjoyed enjoyed that. Um, there are scrims for, they do happen here. We happen a lot more in For Glory as well, which I think there's a link to in the info in the uh, info links channel server info links. I think if there's not, I'll put one in there. Um, no, there actually isn't. I'll, I'll do that later, and I'll put a, a link to For Glory as well. Um, we have, but you can also ping in scrims for um, uh, uh, in the scrims channels here, and have more of them as well. Any other questions before we before we go? Could four for arms be clutch, my sir? <laughs> Doesn't for arms power like yeah become lower the the more people he has around him? Yeah, it's the inverse ninja law. A single ninja okay, so is could, a powerful Could one for Ram beat four clutch mice? <laughs> I think I think we know the answer the, to that as question. As the math goes, more yeah. people are out for yes, Ram, for Ram we we guess. I mean, <laughs> maybe. Um, all right. Well, uh, well, I'm gonna go grind some orders. Thank you for having. Thank me. you much for coming in, QK. Thank you much, and um, thank clutch. Big thank you very much for coming in and doing this session with us. Session with us. I think. We had a lot of really good stuff we talked about. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I, hope uh, I hope the stuff that I mentioned is helpful for some of you. Yeah, it really was. Um, I'll make sure I post the, the VOD of this when we have it on YouTube. I'll post it on the subreddit. And you know, feel free to share it as well. Okay, anybody else coming in the dojo? Um, thank you much, everybody who scrimmed with us. I uh, had a really fun time. And I think it was good to have a little demonstration as well as just talking. Um, Getting my ass beat. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you very much for playing. Um, I hope you guys okay, enjoyed Okay, you can, you can wrap it up. you got to figure out how to do these sentences. I know I'm really bad at saying goodbye at the end of these things. I'm, just, I'm, I'm like this on phone calls as well. <laughs> but uh, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Big thanks for Clutch for um, joining in and sharing his wisdom. Thanks, everybody, for watching on Twitch and in the chat. And I think that's it.
Thank you very much. Come along next Saturday. We will probably do another watch party for the um, Dominion series qualifiers four, and then yeah, that's probably what we'll do. Uh, unless we can think of something else, I'll try and get a uh, warlord, um, a warlord session on crashing charge. That'd be quite fun as well. Hey, anyway, cheers. Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye.